It's just to be makdim, that we're on the days of shovim now. Shovim, like the Arizal, taught us, are days that are exceptionally powerful to do tshuva, exceptionally powerful to come home, to come home to who we truly are. And shovim comes from the acronym of the parishes that we're in right now, Shmois Vaera Boy Bishalach Yisroi Mishpatim, which spell out Shovavim, which means you crazy kids. And the Pasuk from the Prophet says, Shuvu Bonim Shovavim. Come home, you crazy, crazy kids. This year there's two extra weeks, huh? And this year, because it's an Uber year, because the Shana Meuberis, which means the year literally gave birth to an extra month of Adar, means that we have an extra two weeks of Shoivim. So instead of six weeks of this very powerful time of doing Shuvu, we have eight weeks. Shoivim Tat. Tat is Truma Tetzave. So this is this very powerful, it's like an eight week long Yom Kippur. That's right. Not bad, right? Which, by the way, meant that this Shalashudis was like. Kol Nidre. So I hope you guys are in good places. Which now we are in, we, we've, we've catapulted it into an eight-week week long Yom Kippur. And it's an opportunity to do very, very deep tshuva. Now, tshuva doesn't just mean that I did the wrong thing. Because tzaddikim are doing tshuva all the time. Tshuva means to get closer and closer to God. That's tshuva. Tshuva means to come back. To come back to what? to come back to your soul the way it was before it entered into this world. Just think about that for a minute. What did my soul look like before it descended to this world? If I went to Manhattan right now and interviewed a few people and asked them, like, have you thought about what your soul looked like before it came to this world? Do you think many people would be thinking about that? I hope they would be. But I have a sneaking suspicion that most people aren't thinking about that but what their soul looked like before it came to this world, because after we leave this world, after 120 years, our soul is going to go back to that place. Part of the powerful element of tshuva is while you're in this world to reconnect to that place. While you're in this world, in a world of multiplicity, in a world of hiddenness, very, very powerful. Excuse me. And this is the time of shuvu banim shayvim, return, you crazy kids. Because so to speak, as opposed to living a life where you're connected to the source, the root of your soul, you got lost along the path. You got distracted by a whole bunch of things in this world. I always, I always think about this moment when I first, I was visiting my wife's family for, I think it was the first time in Philly. And... I was at a street corner, and this is, this is typical of many, many places. And it was an interesting street corner, because one corner was Burger King, one corner was McDonald's, the other one was KFC, and the other one was, uh, what's the other one? Taco Bell, Wendy's. Wendy's, thank you, Wendy's. And it was like, you know, people were very excited to have so much fast food in one location. I saw a guy eating his chicken wings like, he was guzzling these, these, these uh, fried chicken, just guzzling it. And I just thought to myself a second, like, he's, he's taking this very seriously, these chicken wings, this fried chicken. And I just remember thinking, like, you could just so get lost in a world where you just think about, you know, when's my next bucket of chicken wings going to come from? And obviously we want people to eat. Everyone needs to eat. But we weren't put down in this world to just eat. We weren't sent down to this world to just survive and make it through. And you ask a guy, how you doing? I'm, you know, getting by. You know, how's life? Surviving. Could be worse. That's already nice. Could be worse. He says, could be better. Like, really? Your whole life is the sum total of barely scraping by? We were not put in this world to get lost in just when's my next meal going to come from, when's my next promotion going to come from. That's all the world of getting lost in this world. And shoivim is the time that we hear this baskal, 
we hear this heavenly voice that says, Shuvu banim shoivim. Come home, you wayward sons. Come home, you got lost in this world. And even if you're not doing such bad things per se, but come home to who you are. Come home to what your soul looks like in its source underneath the throne of glory in heaven. Come home to that. All of Torah is designed to help you come home to who you are. To help you reconnect to who you are. That's the power of Torah. Torah is so powerful. It, can, it, it, it completely just rips us open and, 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 and reconnects us to literally the soul of ourselves, to the soul of creation. If you let it. You have to let the Torah move you. So during these days of Shavim, it's even more powerful. The Torah is more powerful during this time. Much more powerful. And it's really up to us to learn the Torah in this very, very powerful way. And therefore, tshuva is not just, I'm sorry for all the bad things I did. Tshuva is this constant moving closer, Hashem, to you, to the master of the world. Shuvu banim shoivavim. Come home. Come home. And really the tshuva of shoivavim is coming from something that happened in the Garden of Eden. What happened in the Garden of Eden? Adam ate from something that he was not supposed to. When that happened, energy, that Adam was deeply connected in this space of total God consciousness, of oneness. After Adam ate, he became more focused, I'm borrowing a term, on the Kentucky Fried Chicken element of reality. The external part of reality motivated him, and he became less aware of his spiritual essence. <coughs> That's what happened when Adam ate. All of that energy that he was absolutely focused on before he ate got scattered around the world. You've probably heard of this. If you've opened up any Chabad book, it's like on every single page. This, this scattering of all these sparks. All of these sparks, all this energy got sent all over the world and would have to be rectified. Essentially what it was is that God energy would go into all of the corners of creation and it would be up to us to go and exactly where you thought Hashem wasn't maybe on that street corner Kentucky fried battered chicken that Hashem is there also in that particular case Hashem is there in such a way you're not allowed to eat the chicken but Hashem, if you're keeping kosher but Hashem is surely there <coughs> and for you to be on in such a place and think about God, you're, that's what's called raising the sparks. You're returning the sparks. A place where you thought God wasn't, this is what it means to, it's not such a spooky mystical concept to elevate the sparks. It's exactly where you thought God wasn't, hear this well, very practical, exactly where you thought God wasn't and He was absent, you show that God is also here by thinking about Hashem, by saying a Mishnah in that place, by saying an Asher Yatsar in that place, making a Shahakal, focusing on God in the place that you thought that He wasn't. That's why a big, big area that we elevate the sparks is through eating. Because most people, when you eat, you're not so aware of God being there. You're aware of the food in front of you and you just want to lay into that like a coyote on a prowl got to eat that, whatever is sitting there. But that's not a godly way to do it. Hashem is, is, His light is filling that food. And therefore the job of the Yid is to, in that moment where you thought that I could just completely identify with my animal self, I choose to remember that Hashem is here. You're grabbing the sparks. You're grabbing God energy. And you're, so to speak, bringing it back. When all of those sparks are brought back, that's called the full tshuva of creation. That's called the coming of Mashiach. When all those sparks are brought back. 
That's why the Lubavitcher Rebbe made a big thing, as, many, as well as many others, Rabbi Noach Weinberg and other tzaddikim, to send Jews around the world to go gather the sparks, to send Yidin to the furthest reaching places. You're some Yid, you, you decided to go on a trip because you wanted to climb Mount Everest, which is probably at a Gaiva, but we'll leave that on the side. And your mom is climbing up Mount Everest, and next thing you know, you, your mom is up there, and you got a couple of Sherpas there, and you're climbing, and this Chabad guy holding onto the side of the mountains. You put on tefillin today, you're like, where did you come from? I'm 15,000 feet up, and you're talking to me about tefillin? He's like, tefillin? You know, it's a shki is coming. What's he doing up there? Sparks. Exactly what you didn't think that person would find Hashem or connect it to Hashem. You need some Chabad in there to offer him some kosher food. The, the yak milk is not so kosher. So you have to make sure if there's yidin there, they have kosher food. That's called bringing in the sparks. That's called returning the sparks. Where was the ultimate expression of the sparks? The ultimate expression of where the sparks concentrated, the darkest place in the world was ancient Egypt. That was the darkest place, the place of the heaviest idol worship was in that place. And that idol worship was so strong that in this week's Parsha, when we are actually now descending into Gullus, we're going in to this exile, really what we're doing is we're going there to grab the sparks. We're going there to reveal that even in such a dark place, Hashem is there. And that's why, of course, Moshe Rabbeinu is growing up in the house of Paro, even in the darkest, darkest place. Paro is the symbol of all evil, the symbol of the evil inclination. Inside his house, on his lap, growing up is Moshe Rabbeinu. In the darkest place is the greatest light. And in that place, you have to go and you have to see that light. That's the symbol of all of what it means. And that's why Shemais is really Shemais and Ve'el is Gematra Membez, the 42 name, name of Hashem, which is really what Yaakov is taking into Mitzrayim, which is the name of Siat Deshmaya, is God's name that will pull out and attract tremendous energy to him. The name Membez. And all these parshias now is about going into a dark place, grabbing the sparks. And that's why there was an Isser once we came out of Mitzrayim to go back to Mitzrayim. Because it says when we left Mitzrayim, it was Kemitzula She'en Dagen. We took out all the fish. We took like a, a fisher's net and we grabbed all the fish. It's not talking about fish, it's talking about sparks of God. And therefore you can't go back there. We grabbed all the sparks, and the sparks are in other places. Many of the tzaddikim who lived in Europe, in Uman, there was a lot of sparks. And wherever Yidin would be, we're grabbing these sparks. We're grabbing these sparks. And the mission, though, was to grab the sparks, take them with us, but then get absolute guidance how to live life as Jews, and that's called Har Sinai. That's called the receiving of the Torah at Mount Sinai. And therefore, the leaving of Mitzrayim was to get to Har Sinai. But it wasn't only to get to Har Sinai. The parsha after Har Sinai is Mishpatim, is that God consciousness will take you now back into every sphere of life. All of Dinim, everything Benam Lechaveroi, some guy's car bumps into the other guy's car. That's all godly how you have to deal with that. All of our courts are godly. Courts run by sages, by people who are only answering to Hashem's law. And in this year, it becomes true metitzave, that that light is so integrated that we can build a home for Hashem. That's the Mishkan. And titzave is that the light is so powerful, we can integrate it even into our clothing. The light is so powerful, it's literally becoming part of us. Even our clothing is becoming integrated with this absolute light that we're walking around like these shining creatures of Hashem. Where even the clothing, which is a very external thing, is reflecting the inner light of my soul the way it is before it came down to this world. There's no difference between my soul up here and all the way down here. This is Shoivim. This is Shuvu Banim Shoivim. That's why these are the parishes of absolute Shuva. 
It's a very happy time of year, a very powerful time of year. And the Arizal revealed this secret to us. And therefore, it's a very good time of year to be learning Tanya. And therefore, that was the introduction to chapter 8 of the Tanya. So we're in the 8th chapter of Shai Yichav Moving forward, my dear friends. Says the Heilige Rebbe. Now that we've discussed how God and the creation are absolutely one, there's no difference between God before creation and God after creation. God is absolutely one. Creation is just an expansion, so to speak, a, a spreading of the plan of God. But from God's perspective, nothing changed. The only thing that changed with the creation was the perspective of the creation, you and I. But really, everything is one. Now what the Balatanya is going to go into is that's nothing has changed and everything is one with God and the creation. But now what we want to do is discuss within Hashem, as Hashem was spreading forth the plan, did anything change in Hashem? And even if you say that Hashem is one, but isn't He, as we've been describing, kind? Isn't He just? Does that not imply that you have multiplicity? An example that's given is like fresh milk. Even though you just see a cup of milk, I hope it's organic, that cup of milk seems just like nothing but milk. But if you look closely, there's fats and carbohydrates and minerals. It's, it's a soup of a lot of different things. But from the surface, it's just, it's just milk. Meaning you could see, if you look deeper into it, that it's a composite of many things. Even though on the surface it looks like just milk. So is God like that? Is he, you know, God? But if I look deeper, I see multiplicity. So we're going to see that God is not. God is not like milk. No matter where you journey into God, all you'll see is God. It's all one. Okay, that's going to be the topic here, which is very gishmat. Let's go. This is what the Rambam says. Hashem, His essence. Everything about God's essence and God's awareness. Everything is one. But what do you mean? There's God and His awareness. How could it be one? There's God and His awareness. No, it's all one. Achtus pshuta. It's one essence. Veloi morkeves klal. It's not combined. It's not fused together. There's nothing. There's no parts within God. When we say Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echad, it's mamish one. Veloi morkeves klal. Kena inyan mamish bekol midoisav. So too it is with all of God's midois. Oh. Midas mean the way that Hashem is kind, the way that Hashem is just. So wouldn't it appear that God is composite of different qualities? We're explaining now that God is one, but doesn't He have these qualities? He acts with compassion. He acts with kindness. He acts. So isn't that at least some composite? So we're explaining no. In all of God's names, God's names refer to the way that God interacts with the world. God has a lot of names. There's a very, very powerful sefer, the Vilna Goyen, even suggested that yeshiva guys learn. It's called Share Ora, The Gates of Light. Already sounds like a good book. It's fire. It's very, very good. Well, it basically goes through the different spheres and really talks about the Kinuyim, the different names of Hashem, excuse me. The different names of God that correspond to each of the spheres. Ten chapters. The powerful thing is, is that the Shari Ora describes, as you're going through each of the chapters, he describes all of the code. Talk about the code. He's decoding the code. He tells you how to navigate each sphere, as you're making your way back up to the highest revelations, 
how to use the names of God to allow you passage through certain gates. And he begins with a mushal that if you came to the king's palace, you don't just go to the king. You have to go through security. And each step of the way, you have to know the code to pass that level of security. So the Rebbe says, as you're moving through tefillah and teira, each one of these codes are the different kinuyim, the different names of Hashem, that give you passage. And there's forces up there, damaging forces that want to prevent you from getting to those highest places to allow for free will. And you have to know the passcodes to get every step of the way to the higher and the higher revelations of Hashem. So He guides you through that process. Very gishmaka sefer. It's a very good sefer. It's a good sefer to learn any time, especially shayvim. Who wrote that sefer? It's a rishon. Uh, I'm for, and the, the name is eluding me right now. But he's a rishon. He's a rishon, which means from time from a thousand years ago. So a rishon means very high level authority. Very, very high. Like we're talking like Rashi. Rashi, Rambam. The Shari Ora. So this is... This is known to be a very, very famous Sefer. It's also, it's a little bit you know, more on ground level. It's not just straight Kabbalah. It's a little bit brought down. And the Vilna Goyen felt that it was even a practical Musr Sefer because it's tuning you into the meaning of davening every step of the way. But what we're going to have to appreciate and understand is that all that is, is, is begging a question, which means if Hashem has all these names and Hashem has all of these Midas, it is interacting in the world in different ways. Does that not seem to indicate that there's some composition? That there's a composite factor? So we're going to see that absolutely zero composite. God is one. If you went up to the world of Atsilas, which is the beginning of the spheres, all you would see is God. You wouldn't see Chesed, Gvur, Tiferes. You wouldn't see that. You just see God. That's all you would see. So we're going to have to describe here how that's going to work. And the Balatani is going to give us a very beautiful analogy to appreciate that even though we speak about God as having midos, being kind, acting in kind ways, having different names that refer to different ways that God is relating to the world, He retains absolute unity, absolute pure unification in His essence. How that's going to be, the Balatayim is going to guide us through that. We should be Zaycha Mamish to know all the Shemus of Hashem with Simcha and to connect to Hashem in the greatest ways possible and Besiat Dishma to know Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echad Mamish. Kol Tov. Have a wonderful day. Shavuot Tov. Kol Tov.